Welcome to the DIDX, an Astrocom Pinoy Kubo sponsored podcast. I'm Suzanne Bowen, and we have with us the executive producer, Theo Brooks, the director, Ron Morales, of an independent film. The name of that film is Graceland, A Life for Every Lie. It was brought to our attention by several who are networking on the social network PinoyCubo.com. But in particular, we can thank Cindy Lopez. She's an actress and model and ESOL teacher. Cindy? Hello, I'm Cindy from the Philippines. Thank you so much for joining me for my first interview. Of course, before we begin, I, I would just like to, you know, take this moment to thank Suzanne for giving me this chance to be a part of the Pinoy Cubo universe. It is, you know, really, really an honor. And I just want to welcome you both. Thank you for agreeing to talk with us for a few minutes, Ron and Theo. No, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. We're thinking about how the media seems to emphasize, like, oil is the main reason for terrorism, wars, all the evil on Earth. Keep thinking that these three things are more about maybe trafficking, like child trafficking, human trafficking, sex trafficking, human organ trafficking, and so forth. You know, when we find out that our parents make mistakes, it's such a shock to us. We don't really want to believe it. It's true. So I was thinking maybe Graceland, A Life for Every Lie, will, you know, definitely educate us. It is the title of your film. So we are curious, would you share what led to the name, what does it mean, and how does it apply to the theme of the story? And to me, uh, Graceland is is like Polanski's Chinatown. It's just kind of is, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, I mean, it's a conceptual title. Um, you know, we do tackle um, sex trafficking and human trafficking, and, and certainly these are results of social and economic forces. I mean, this film really, I wanted to focus on the human element. Um, I think that, um, you know, much like so Brazilian cinema, uh, Filipino filmmaking uh, tradition, which, you know, Ron had a lot to do with in, in, in making his film, as he is really a hybrid American Filipino filmmaker, has a lot to do with research and a lot to do with bringing real-life themes and real-life problems onto the screen. And, you know, as you mentioned, as, as to oil and, and the sort of geopolitical problems that tend to dominate the world of cinema, uh, those are themes that are espoused as maybe being acceptable or acceptably controversial for Hollywood. And, you know, Ron really wanted to go outside of, of that system and outside of those norms uh, in creating this. So Graceland, much as Polanski told his producer, Robert <laughs> Evans, <laughs> he said, it, it just is. Baby, it's a place I'll take you. Um, and Graceland is a place we want to take you to where the problems and the issues and the characters and all of the points of, of dramatic tension and, and counter tension and geopolitical strife uh, exist outside of what Hollywood and, and the mainstream will tell you is acceptable to be controversial or acceptable to be mad about. Makes sense. I think Philippines is full of colorful um, history, activity, people, ideas and ways of life. So I was wondering if you would tell us about the real life roots of the story of this film. Well, Susanna, as, as you may or may not know, I, I came from a, a photo documentary background. So it's kind of inherent in me where where I was uh, originally researching this, stor this story about shaman shamanism in the Philippines. Um, the character that was uh, that was writing uh, was, in, is, was in a very dark place in his life. And, and while I was there, um, I ended up interviewing several um, women who worked in the sex industry. And I ultimately felt like theirs was a story I needed to tell and wanted to tell of the Philippines. Um, yeah. It's. I bet it was pretty eye-opening. Um, I can't even begin to wonder. I mean, it, it's it's pretty tough subject matter, especially when you you know you're you're, especially when I'm listening to some of their stories, how they grew up, the, their family members, how they brought some of their family members into the industry. It's 
it's a different it's a different way of life over there mm -hmm. you know an introduction to the film says when a poor chauffeur of a corrupt politician is forced to conceal a crime he has to lie in order to save his daughter and what causes a good person who begins a career in politics to become corrupt i know that's a little off the subject but i think it has a lot to do here you know with what's going on second i was wondering if you could give us some hint as to what the chauffeur had to lie about i um i mean this film and I, I never really intended to show the demise of a political icon um and to me graceland was always intended to show what what these socio and economic situations can and how they can force anyone to be uh in this morally compromising position and um, as for the second question of the, the hints <laughs> um you guys are going to probably have to wait a few more months before you get a hint. Yeah, I figured that. You know, I was really being brave on that one. Um, <laughs> but I, let, let me go back to the fact that you actually interviewed some women who got involved in the sex trafficking. And then they also, you know, invited their family members, I guess, because it was a way to make a living. Suzanne, if I could actually just uh, take that question uh, for a second. I mean, the issue of, of not just of human trafficking, but uh, of sex work internationally, you know, as we, we approach it in this film, and as many filmmakers around the world are sort of beginning to approach this, uh, much like your last question as to how could a good person become sort of a bad person, uh, what we're trying to look at is, you know, the, the sex work sort of represents, it represents a certain kind of violence on an institutional level. Yeah. And we're trying to look at problems at an equally institutional basis. Right. Uh, so as to why you know a woman would come to find this life, there are a lot of filmmakers that uh, that are broaching those questions. In fact, uh, you know our associate uh, David Raymond is getting yes. ready to yes. direct a yes. film called Esperanza in uh, Buenos Aires, which we will also be producing, okay. um, which addresses a lot of these questions. But for us, uh, it, it's really about the system and and what the series of choices are. It's not to say is someone good or bad because of these choices. Uh, we're hoping to look at those those dimensions that that make this uh, that make this economic property of it being favorable. You make it even possible. I was wondering what kinds of people and organizations do you think, or guess, are really running child prostitution and human trafficking rings? What kinds of people tend to be the clients of these rings? And you know, just what you believe from what the research you did for the film, all the parties involved, those who run them, work with them, buy from them. I was thinking they almost all have children. I mean, what's the difference between their children and the children they kidnapped or prostitute or traffic? Just questions that kind of haunt my mind. I mean, it's a question of, of the have and have nots in the Philippines. The it's a it's a tough question um you know never really want to look at who was who is par um, part of these i mean i think that something you made very clear with your film ron is that uh is that it can be anyone i mean the geometry of this situation i we don't want to go too much further because we still want to keep you know uh a lot of our details of the film <laughs> close to us exactly uh, yeah i understand that a lot of the ways that, that Ron composed his film, and I really think, you know, I don't know how much you intentionally did this or if it just came out of your process, but it, to me it really showed that there isn't much of a difference. And one of the ways why this is, one of the ways that child trafficking and, and human trafficking has become so pervasive and so terrible is that anyone can be involved. Anyone can secretly be a client. Anyone can secretly, uh, you know, be can succumb or yeah. or become subject to or fall victim to exactly uh, there, there are very subtle and very profound and very terrifying ways that it can touch the lives of the most ordinary people mm -hmm. and that's and one, that's for the yeah. majority of uh, people that I that I interviewed mm -hmm. you know from both sides both right. did right. in, interview some of the clients um, some of the managers or you could otherwise call them pimps okay. um, you know, they have their families. They even spoke about their families. You know, what? Why are you doing this? It's yeah. People don't really want to believe that this is going on. They want to think it's just a small, tiny problem. But in fact, a lot of people are involved. And 
I'm looking forward to watching the film myself. I don't know if I'll get a chance to locally because I'm in a tiny city called Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> I'll have to go to probably San Francisco to see it. But um, we'll be sure to send you a copy for being a fan early on. Oh, yeah. that'll be that will be great. I really appreciate that. And I know that you have started. You've got your talent gathered. It sounds like you've got some great people working with you. I mean, we've got Theo Brooks right here. I mean, he is, uh, well, it's Rebecca. Uh-huh. Rebecca Lundgren was our, you know, our lead physical producer on the project. He was very close to it from start to beginning, and has worked tirelessly to help bring it about. The executive team is run by Eric, David, and myself. Sam, David, Sam Ryder also. Sam Ryder as well. It was shot by the tremendous Sung Ray Cho. Correct. Um, okay. Jorge Orletegui. Uh, I can never pronounce his last name. Lortigui. Jorge Lortigui. Or Lord, or one of the editors, James Lesage. The illustrious James Lesage. Uh, we have a great, incredible team of people, really cool international team of people that came <laughs> yeah. together, you know, mostly based in, in Metro Manila and in New York City, who, you know, a conglomeration of a, a couple of different companies, Ron's company, so sort of at the nucleus of the whole thing. Okay. We're involved in a couple of projects, the flagship of which is obviously Graceland, that try to look, you know, our, our theory is to try to look at, at these human stories at a, you know, at a very international and, and very human level and, and try to bring compelling yet realistic and relevant stories to the screen. We don't believe it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a documentary to be relevant mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be stupid to be a movie. Well, I read one of the updates on Kickstarter about the truly international group of people involved in it, and I, I've always thought the best things result from diverse um, people and ideas, things coming together. One of the companies I was just with, we were spread out between like Malaysia and Mexico and Pakistan even and the U.S., and we accomplished some things that I never thought I'd ever be a part of, the coolest things result. So, speaking of Kickstarter, I've already... I, I like to where this conversation is going. <laughs> <laughs> People who listen to this podcast, you know, they're going to download it on their mobile devices. And they're going to listen over and over because they're downloading podcasts, the type they like to listen to. And they're going to want to know, how can they, you know, get involved? How can they participate uh, if you have any funding potentials out there or ways to connect with you guys. Love to hear about that. We're, we're on, we are on Kickstarter. Graceland is the title. Just type it in. We're, our, our pledge we, ends. What is it? I believe we have another 24 days. Uh, you know, we love Kickstarter because we love the, the community fundraising model. As we said, as we're trying to bring you know, new kinds of films to the market with new kinds of themes, these, as these films become possible because of certain digital technologies that makes them easier to shoot, Equally, there are new kinds of technologies like Kickstarter that make them easy to pay for. Right. By its nature, a controversial film like this, uh, you know, bigger companies are not going to be able to get behind it until they realize it's good. Yeah. So we're at this very difficult phase where we know it's good, and hopefully some of the, you know, the circle around us know it's good and it's something that should come out. Um, but we're getting ready to, you know, get it to a stage where companies will approach it and bring it to the market at large. So we greatly need the support uh, of the the greater community at Kickstarter, and we've made a, a number of programs, both for people interested in the subject matter of the film and for other filmmakers themselves to get involved. Um, for, you know, for donations, there's a number of awards, not li limited to screenings with Ron and myself, as well as another group of panelists involved with these serious issues. We'll come and speak with you and, you know, a party of your friends, not just about the film and what it went into it, but to the real-life themes and the real-life problems that are behind it. Ron has, you know, actually offered very generously to help get involved with other people's films at a wow. certain level of donation. Yeah. And for any amateur filmmakers out there, we've managed to uh, secure a very serious award uh, from a close friend that for a large donation, a, an A-list uh, Hollywood writer-director will read your script, meet with you to give you a full course of notes on it. That's really cool. Um, so those who are listening... I will be sure to include the exact URL in the text uh, description of this podcast, but as Ron and Theo mentioned, it, uh, just type in graceland at kickstarter.com and it will pull up that their page there. At this point on December 31st, 
13th, they have 24 days left to reach the goal that they have set. I know that if you use Twitter, just type in hashmark indie film, put it together, and then put the name of the film, and if you want to put something about the plot or some keywords uh, that we've discussed in this podcast, and then the Kickstarter URL, that will be picked up by everybody who's interested in indie films, because that's a pretty popular hash search that people look for on Twitter. So how can listeners of this LG podcast help find out more and connect with you guys? We also have a Facebook page, a Vimeo page, and a YouTube page. We're all, all over all, the place. All over, all over the place in which, you know, even just a simple, I like this video will help spread the word. Any comments on, on these websites. Um, all the help is necessary for this. Yeah, it's okay, a, and this is a film that's not going to come to fruition without the support of the community, and we're reaching not, not just to you know our friends in the independent film world, but also to uh, our brothers and sisters in the Filipino community uh, on a global scale to help us bring about Graceland. And we are definitely going to work on helping you to do that. Now, on Facebook, what would someone type in to find the page there? Um, I'm going to bus runs chops a little bit and say Ron Morales he will be your friend <laughs> okay all right Ron everyone's best friend all right <laughs> okay I want to stay in touch with you guys um, can't wait for everybody to hear this discussion and please just um, if there's anything else you want to say we'll close this discussion out okay well thank you thank you Suzanne thank you very much all right.